Okay, so today we are going to talk about hepatitis B virus infection, a very important topic. We'll discuss that what is the presentation of hepatitis B virus infection and how is hepatitis B virus transmitted. We'll discuss that how do you diagnose a patient with hepatitis B virus according to the serology. We'll discuss that how do you treat hepatitis B virus according to the latest guidelines of American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases, AASLD guidelines. We'll discuss that if the patient is having HIV co-infection, how do you treat hepatitis B in that patient? First of all, hepatitis B virus is basically a DNA virus of hepatina virus family and it is transmitted mainly through two routes sexual and parental. Parental means the IV route. These are the two most common routes of transmission of hepatitis B virus. Mother to child transmission is also a route of infection which is called as vertical transmission of the virus. In vertical transmission, the baby gets infection during the birth process and that infant becomes a chronic carrier in 90% cases, a chronic carrier of hepatitis B virus. Now you would be thinking that why does an infant or a baby get a chronic hepatitis B infection? That infant gets chronic hepatitis B virus because that infant does not have a robust immune system. That infant does not have a strong immune system. Therefore, an immune response cannot clear up the virus from the body. Therefore, an infant cannot clear the virus from the body and gets chronic infection and becomes a chronic carrier in 90% of the cases. Other than that, needle stick injury commonly seen in healthcare workers can lead to 30% chances of getting infected with hepatitis B virus. Coming to the presentation of hepatitis B virus. Presentation of hepatitis B virus depends on whether that patient is having an acute hepatitis B virus infection or a chronic hepatitis B virus infection. Acute hepatitis B virus is an infection that lasts less than six months. And if the patient is having infection for greater than six months, that is called as a chronic hepatitis B infection. If the patient is having an acute hepatitis B virus, then the presentation is different. Normally, the incubation period of hepatitis B virus is from one to six months, average of 75 days. After 75 days, patient starts to develop symptoms of the disease. The clinical symptoms include serum sickness-like illness. Serum sickness-like illness presents as rash, arthralgias, myalgia, and fever. That is a non-specific presentation of hepatitis B virus. This serum sickness-like illness is thought to be occur due to immune complex formation in hepatitis B virus infection. That immune complex formation leads to rash, arthralgia, myalgia, and fever in these patients. That is called a serum sickness-like illness. And patient can also have nausea, anorexia, jaundice, jaundice due to liver damage, due to increased bilirubin in the blood that leads to jaundice. Patient will have liver damage, therefore they will present to you with right upper hypochondrium pain or their right upper hypochondrium will be tender because the liver is damaged. Symptoms usually resolve in few weeks. Since in immunocompetent people, in immunocompetent people, they have a strong immune response and that strong immune response elicits a strong fight and that fight clears up the hepatitis B virus from the body and these patients have symptoms for few weeks or even less than six months. That is called as hepatitis B virus. But in some patients, a chronic fatigue malaise persists for a longer time. Coming to subclinical hepatitis. What is subclinical hepatitis? Subclinical hepatitis is the one in which the patient is having hepatitis B virus infection, but there are no signs and symptoms of hepatitis B virus. This mainly occurs in the patients who are not having strong immune response. Those patients who are immunocompromised are, as I said, the infants. Those infants are not having a strong immune response and their immune response cannot fight the infection. Therefore, they, are, they do not develop symptoms. The symptoms of hepatitis B virus are not due to the virus mainly. It's due to the immune response that tries to fight and clear up that virus. If a person is having a strong immune response, it will try to fight the infection and there will be more symptoms. And if the patient is having a weak immune response, if the patient is immunosuppressed, or if there is an infant that has a weak immune response, that immune response cannot fight with the infection and you would not be able to see any signs and symptoms of the disease. That patient will go into a chronic infection. That patient will be having a subclinical hepatitis with no signs and symptoms of hepatitis. And that patient will convert into a chronic carrier. 
children less than five years of age and or immunocompromised horse goes into a subclinical hepatitis. Coming to the presentation of a chronic hepatitis B virus. Now, it is a simple concept. If the patient is having a strong response, that patient will be having more symptoms and that patient will be having an acute infection. If the patient has a weak immune response, that patient will be having less symptoms or even no symptoms and that patient will go into chronic infection more than six months. If the patient is having infection for more than six months and you are able to detect hepatitis B surface antigen with no symptoms, that is called as a chronic hepatitis B virus infection. That patient has an asymptomatic infection, subclinical hepatitis, and very few of the patients are symptomatic. And if they develop symptoms, their symptoms are just like an acute hepatitis B virus infection symptoms, but their symptoms are way more milder. Who gets chronic infection? Now, it's very simple to remember that who gets chronic infection. Anyone with immunocompromised status or weak immunity develops a chronic infection because they are not developing symptoms, they are not seeking medical care, and they don't even know that they are having a hepatitis B virus infection. 90% of the infants develop a chronic hepatitis B virus. 50% of the children from one to five years of age develop chronic infection because they have a weak immune system. And only 5% of the adults. It's a very small number as compared to 95% of the people who get uh, resolved, who get recovery from hepatitis B virus. Only 5% of the adults. And these are also the adults who have a weak immune system who go into chronic hepatitis B virus infection. Coming to the diagnosis of hepatitis B virus. Diagnosis of hepatitis B virus is a topic that all of the students fear because they see all the serology and different forms of antibodies and antigens. But I will try to make it as easy as possible for you. Remember, when a patient comes to you and you want to see that whether that patient is having a hepatitis B virus infection or not, you screen that patient for hepatitis B virus with two things. Hepatitis B surface antigen. Hepatitis B surface antigen is an antigen that is present on the surface of hepatitis B virus. You detect that hepatitis B surface antigen. If the patient is having hepatitis B surface antigen positive, it means that that patient is having a hepatitis B infection. Other than that, you detect another marker. You detect an antibody in the blood of that patient, an antibody against the core of hepatitis B virus. That is called as anti-hepatitis B core IgM, an antibody against the core part of the hepatitis B virus. Why are we detecting an anti-HBC IgM? Now you'd be thinking that what is the need of anti-HBC IgM while we already have an HBS AG for the screening? Why is Dr. Vakas also saying that we have to go for anti-HBC IgM? This is because that there is a period in hepatitis B virus infection which is called as window period. In that window period of hepatitis B virus infection, this hepatitis B surface antigen is negative and that patient is still having infection of hepatitis B. In that window period where the hepatitis B surface antigen is negative, it is misleading. And in that period, only anti-hepatitis B core IgM is positive. So we do not want to miss the infection in window period. We want to detect the hepatitis B virus infection even in the window period. So even if the patient is having hepatitis B surface antigen negative and that patient is in a window period, we catch that through anti-HPC IgM. So that is used for the screening of hepatitis B virus. And if the patient comes out to be positive, then we have to further screen the patient. We have to further investigate the patient. We measure hepatitis B E A G. What is hepatitis B E antigen? Hepatitis B E antigen is basically a protein secreted by hepatocytes when the virus is replicating, when the virus is multiplying in the hepatocytes, a protein is secreted from hepatocytes that is called as hepatitis E antigen. And remember, it shows the infectious period. Hepatitis E antigen shows that the patient is highly infectious. If the patient is having positive hepatitis E antigen, remember E for infectious, that patient is having an infectious hepatitis B virus infection. Other than that, you also look for hepatitis B virus DNA. You look for how many DNA copies are there in the blood, how much that hepatitis B virus has replicated. 
positive hepatitis b e antigen suggests high degree of infectivity a positive hbe age you show that patient is highly infectious coming to the serological studies of hepatitis b virus as i said that there is an antigen present on the surface of hepatitis b virus that is called as hepatitis b surface antigen and it is the first marker to be positive to be detected in the earliest phase of hepatitis b infection when everything is negative when everything is undetectable hepatitis b surface antigen is positive and it means that the virus has just entered the body then patient starts to develop acute infection the patient starts to develop in acute infection because the virus is within the body hbs antigen is positive and now that a virus has started replicating that virus has started replicating has start and has started producing hbv dna hbv dna is positive that virus has started replicating in the liver therefore it is producing protein hbe ag is positive and it is thinking that okay i am going to proliferate and immune system is not going to know that is not the case if the patient is immunocompetent immune system will realize that there is a virus proliferating in the body and it will be provoked and there will be antibodies produced against the viruses antibodies produced against the core of the virus and they will kill the virus therefore you will see antibodies against the virus as anti hbc igm anti hepatitis b core igm antibodies will be positive in acute infection so there is a fight going on between the virus and the immune system and then comes a very important and interesting part in the replication of hepatitis b virus the window phase or the serological gap phase what happens in window phase is that there was a virus replicating in the body and then immune system just came to know about the virus and it started producing anti hepatitis b core igm antibody and it started firing it with core antibodies these antibodies start to neutralize the virus and there comes a point when these virus antigens are neutralized by these antibodies at that point these antigens are not detectable in blood but these antibodies are detectable these antibodies neutralize the antigens and these antigens are now not detectable in blood only the antibodies can be detected at that point that is called as a window phase a serological gap phase see the hepatitis b surface antigen is negative hepatitis b dna is negative hepatitis b e antigen is negative because they have been neutralized by the immune system they have been neutralized by the antibodies only the antibodies anti hepatitis b core igm is positive therefore we used anti hepatitis b core igm in the screening because if the patient is in the window phase that patient will be hepatitis b surface antigen negative and you won't be able to detect an infection that patient is infected but that patient is in window phase so to detect infection in window phase you have to go for anti hepatitis b core igm that is the only marker that is positive during the window phase and when the patient has recovered from hepatitis b virus how would you know about that it is very simple when the patient has recovered from hepatitis b virus all the antigens of hepatitis b virus will be negative and all the antibodies will be positive it means that between the war of the immune system and the hepatitis b virus immune system one and immune system prevails all the antibodies are now positive all the antigens are negative so now see what happens is that the patient is having negative hepatitis b surface antigen the negative hepatitis b e a g hepatitis b v dna everything has been cleared up there is no virus in the body and you we can only detect hepatitis b core igg antibodies they are positive immune response has won and iggs are present in the blood anti hepatitis b surface antibodies are also positive antibodies against the surface antigen of hepatitis b are also positive which means that the patient has recovered from hepatitis b virus so this is all about the serology of hepatitis b virus now how would we know that the patient is immunized against hepatitis b virus we immunize the patients with hepatitis b virus by giving hepatitis b surface antigen we give killed hepatitis b surface antigen that killed hepatitis b surface antigen provokes production of anti hepatitis b surface antigens antibodies 
and therefore you would be able to see anti hepatitis b surface antigen antibodies in an immunized patient and if the patient is having hepatitis b surface antigen positive and with that that patient is also having anti hepatitis b core igg positive it means that the immune system is still fighting the infection and it has not yet cleared up the virus it has not yet cleared away the virus from the blood there is still a fight going on between the immune system and the virus and that patient has become a carrier of hepatitis b whereas that patient is a chronic carrier of hepatitis b virus if the patient is also having a positive hepatitis b e antigen or hepatitis b v dna with these things to be positive that patient is an infective carrier because as i said that when hepatitis b e is positive that patient is infectious so this is all about the serology of hepatitis b virus coming to the lab studies in the lab studies you need to do liver function test and in liver function test ast alt will be elevated and the alt will be elevated more than ast therefore the ratio will be less than 1 gamma glutamyl transferase will be elevated and there will be mixed hyperbilirubinemia mixed conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin will be up i have talked about bilirubin in detail in my video on uh, work up of jondes you can check out that video in the link given in the description below other than that abdominal ultrasound can be done to look for the status of liver how much the liver has been damaged and in few rare cases for the diagnosis or for the prognosis you do liver biopsy to see if you are suspecting a liver cancer coming to the treatment of hepatitis b virus infection in the treatment of hepatitis b virus infection it depends at whether the patient is having an acute infection or a chronic infection if the patient is having an acute hepatitis b infection that acute hepatitis b infection just needs supportive care in the acute hepatitis b infection pharmacological therapy is not indicated what we are waiting for is that the immune system will itself clear up the infection and there will be no infection after some time so in acute hepatitis b infection supportive care is given pharmacological therapy is not indicated and if the patient is having severe infection altered mental status increase is inr acute liver failure a situation in which you think that the virus is winning and immune system is going to lose because the virus is causing excessive damage and body is unable to clear up the virus by itself in that case you give antiviral therapy entecavir tenofovir is given entecavir tenofovir are antivirals that will clear away the hepatitis b virus from the body clear away the infection from the body other than that pigilated interferon alpha are used for the treatment of hepatitis b virus but they are not given if the patient is having acute decompensated liver failure it is contraindicated in acute decompensated liver failure so entecavir and tenofovir are given if the patient is having a severe infection if you do hepatitis b surface antigen in a patient and that comes out to be positive after that you need to do hepatitis e antigen and that also comes out to be positive in that patient the patient is having an infectious hepatitis b virus because hepatitis b e antigen is also positive in that patient you need to see the alt levels according to the guidelines you need to see that whether the alt levels are less than the upper limit of normal or the alt levels are greater than two times the upper limit of normal or the alt levels are between these two alt greater than upper limit of normal but less than two times upper limit of normal according to these alt levels we will treat the patient what does these alt level indicate alt level indicate the liver damage in that patient if the alt levels are equal to or less than upper limit of normal then you need to do hepatitis b virus dna levels that how much the hepatitis b virus dna levels are if the dna levels are greater than 20000 international unit per ml it means that there is virus in the body but that virus has not yet induced liver damage because the alt is normal in that patient you do not need to give any antiviral treatment in that patient you just need to monitor give supportive care because the virus will be cleared up by the immune system here you need to monitor alt and hepatitis b virus every 6 3 to 6 months and you need to do hepatitis e antigen every 6 to 12 month to monitor the patient if the patient is having alt levels greater than two times of upper limit of normal it means that the alt levels are elevated the liver is damaged and if the hepatitis b virus dna copies are greater than 20000 international per unit 
uh, it means that the virus has replicated a lot there is a lot of liver damage in that patient you need to treat you need to give antivirals to that patient what antivirals are given we'll discuss it in a while and if the patient is having alt levels between these two greater than upper limit of normal but less than two times the upper limit of normal in that patient if the dna copies are greater than 20000 international unit according to these guidelines in that patient you need to see if the patient is having age greater than 40 years and if the alt is are persistently elevated in and if the patient is having any fibrosis or inflammation of the liver in that patient you need to treat it but if the patient is not having any one of these that patient does not require any antiviral treatment if the patient is not having any one of these you do not need to treat it but if the patient is having any one of these you need to treat that patient with antiviral therapy then according to these guidelines there is a mutant form of hepatitis b virus a mutant form in which the patient is having a hepatitis B virus. That patient is having a positive hepatitis B surface antigen, but the hepatitis E antigen is negative. The hepatitis E antigen is negative, but still the patient is having an infectious hepatitis B virus. That patient is said to have a mutant form of hepatitis B virus, and that leads to progressive severe disease. In that patient, you need to do ALT levels and hepatitis B DNA. If the patient is having ALT level less than upper limit of normal and hepatitis B virus DNA is greater than or equal to 2000 international unit per ml, the, the value over here is smaller because the, the mu this is a mutant form of hepatitis B virus and it is more infectious, it causes more progressive disease. Therefore, the DNA copies are set on the lower bar. ALTs are normal and the hepatitis B virus DNA is there. It means that that patient needs monitoring. That patient does not need antiviral therapy because immune system will clear up. The liver damage is not there. You monitor the patient. If the patient is having ALT levels greater than two times the upper limit normal, it means that the patient is having severe disease, severe liver damage and hepatitis B virus DNA copies are greater than 2000 international unit per ml. That patient needs treatment with antiviral therapy. And if the values of ALT are between these two, that case, the criteria remains the same as we discussed. You see the age, if the age is greater than 40, if there is persistent elevation of ALT and if there is fibrosis and inflammation of liver, that patient will be treated with antivirals. And if the patient is not having any one of these, the patient will be monitored. So according to these guidelines, we know that which patients must be treated with antiviral therapy and which patients are not to be treated with antiviral therapy. And then we also discuss a mutant form, a more severe and progressive hepatitis B virus DNA in which the hepatitis E antigen is negative, but the virus is proliferating, a mutant form of hepatitis B virus. In chronic hepatitis B virus pegylated interferon alpha are used. These interferon alpha are basically a combination of interferon alpha and polyethylene glycol. These pegylated interferon alpha, they basically boost the immune system to fight and kill the infection. They increase transcription of the genes that increase the immune response. And they are only indicated in younger patients with compensated liver disease. They are not indicated. They are even contraindicated in decompensated liver disease. Contraindications of pigylated interferon alpha include decompensated cirrhosis, psychiatric illnesses like depression, sleep disturbance. They include pregnancy, autoimmune conditions, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. Adverse effects of interferon alpha include flu-like symptoms. The patient will be feeling sick all the time, flu-like symptoms, runny nose, astralgia, myalgia, major depressive disorder, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. Then with pigylated interferon alpha, there are nucleotide and nucleoside analogs that are also used in the treatment of hepatitis B virus. These nucleotide and nucleoside analogs can be given in both compensated and decompensated liver disease. They are not contraindicated in decompensated liver disease, unlike interferon alpha. So they include tenofovir. Tenofovir is a preferred drug. Tenofovir is a, has higher efficacy and that has lower rate of drug resistance. It is a very effective drug in the treatment of hepatitis B virus. And entecavir is also a very effective drug for the treatment of hepatitis B virus. This nucleotide and nucleoside analog basically stop the replication, the DNA replication of hepatitis B virus, therefore inhibit the viral proliferation. Other than that, lemovidine, adofovir, telbuvidine were used for the treatment of hepatitis B virus, but these viruses are now no longer preferred due to higher rates of 
रेजिस्टेंस एंड लोअर एफिकेसी टिनोफोवीर एंड एंटेकवीर आर नाउ द प्रेफर्ड ड्रग्स and if the patient is having hepatitis b virus with co infection of hiv virus then we give drugs for hepatitis b virus treatment as well as hiv treatment we give tenofovir for hepatitis b and we give lemuvudine or amtricitabine to kill the hiv virus all co infected patients should receive treatment regardless of the cd4 count you don't see cd4 count you just give the treatment if the patient is having hepatitis b virus and hiv both in summary we talked about transmission we talked about the screening and diagnosis we talked about the serology we talked about the lab studies we talked about assld guidelines in both positive and negative cases we talked about pig elated interferon alpha for the treatment of chronic hepatitis its contraindications and its adverse effect we talked about tenofovir and tecavir nucleotide analogs for treatment of hepatitis b virus and at the end co infection with hiv So if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine the link of that playlist is given in the description below thank you very much